Yeah. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Yeah, good. we need like a good opening like like good morning wood yeah it'd be nice i mean if, if if we had the energy that streamlined straight from us pressing record into that it'd be good but we just anybody who's listening to this needs to know that we just spent five to ten minutes trying to figure out audio and yeah uh, but we figured it out and that's all that matters 100 percent, and that's what this whole are you telling is. me that your energy levels are low right now no not at all i'm just letting you know that actually you know what full disclosure yes they are is I'm this not because lie. you've spent the last few days in the frontier no it's it's establishing your, your claim stake at the new house no it's even worse than that i mean that was energizing it was hard but it was energizing i did the last crossfit open workout that i think i'm ever going to do in my life like i'm just fucking wow. done with it my back you remember when I was training for CrossFit when we were living together in Boulder, how fucked up I was all yeah, the time? Yeah, you look like a 75-year-old man. Yeah, dude. Last night, I couldn't sleep because my back hurt so bad. And it's my, it, listen, it, a lot of this has to do with the fact that I'm not training for this stuff right now, but I went heavy as shit on this barbell complex that you're supposed to do at the end of it. And I didn't, I didn't have like a bar set up to do bar muscle-ups for the workout. And I just chicken winged it the whole time. You know, when you like chuck your arm yeah. over Dude, I just fucked myself up so badly. And I was like, I don't get why. And then I pressed submit for my workout at like 459 and it didn't accept it. So I was like, that's it. I'm just fucking over it. Like I'm working out in a room by myself, trying to get these scores that don't even fucking matter. <sighs> it just drives me nuts. And it's just an ego off, thing. I usually start off doing the CrossFit Open every year and I get like two workouts in and then it's basically max snatch or some sort of barbell complex and i'm like this is stupid i don't know why i wasted my 25 dollars in the last two weeks doing this stuff i would say there's probably got to be a recording point i would say more than 50 percent 50 percent maybe even less than 30 percent of their people who buy in actually continue to continue the workouts all the way through if i had to guess at, at, at least for sure yeah, like they started out this year with double unders and wall walks, which is basically you walking upside down on a wall. And when I saw that, I was like, fuck, this is so stupid. I have a I have a litmus test. If I tell my dad and he's embarrassed about it, then I should be embarrassed about it. Like, can you imagine if telling I, you if I followed that policy for everything I did, like everything I did in life, I don't I don't think I would do anything. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I get that. But I'm just saying from a professional standpoint, like if I, if, yes. you, if I was my dad and my son came to me and was like, Hey, I'm doing the tactical games. Like, you know, all the best military responders in the world are, are competing to see who's the best shooting and, and, you know, all around a fitness, like, that, Oh, that pretty gosh darn cool. That makes sense. If I was like, yeah, dad, I did this workout where I was doing jump rope and then walking up a wall upside down. And then I videotaped myself and submitted it on the internet my dad's like, well, that, that doesn't sound like a really useful. He's like, well, well, you're not my son anymore. He's like, do we know each other? How did you get my number? <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, it, dude. I was God. like, God dang it, dude. My body is so fucked up right now. Like my middle back, um, my lower back, like my sacrum, and just my shoulders are just toast. And if yeah. I went for a two, I'm three a, hour bike ride, doesn't happen. Yeah. And in my, uh, as I'm getting up there in years, acquiring more and more knowledge, I'm getting better at like my day to day training. I feel really good. I feel super fit. I don't push myself too much. And I like stay within those boundaries that I know exist. And then all it takes is like one, you know, getting together with like an old friend or something, or like I come work out with you. And next thing you know, like boom, you push past that limit and you're just totally crippled for for days yeah that's the game dude i remember the first time it ever happened to me these swedish kids were at malibu fitness and they showed up and they're all like six foot two to six foot four and like jacked and they're like we are working out come join us blonde boy and i'm like nobody calls me blonde boy and i'm like okay and so did we they, just all, start did they all have really high turtlenecks and just listening to electronic music. short shorts yeah and like, tss, 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 tss. yeah but they were doing heavy deadlifts have you seen that like, that scene from sorry go no no no, no. I, I i uh they were doing heavy deadlifts and i just jumped uh, I, in I just, and just started swinging my dingus and boom back gone 
I'm thinking of that scene from Super Troopers where uh, the European guy gets yeah. pulled over. And the chick, they're like, like she's like lifting you know up her about. panties and stuff. Yeah. That's me day to day. <laughs> I have to say, dude, Fantastic. like I spent a couple of days up at the new house and I felt like the world, it felt like an old world that I hadn't experienced in a long time since like being a kid. It was so random. Cass was there and he was all fucked up on pot the whole time. So he was like paranoid the whole time, which is hysterical. Like he thought the house was haunted and anytime. So like for some reason, like we're moving in and people can see we have a U-Haul outside. We had at least a half dozen people from the town stop at the house and come talk to us, like pull over. Really? Like, Hey, what's going on? Like, is this like a, you are you staying here? Like, is there Airbnb? Are you moving in? And I was like, yeah, I just got the place. And they're like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I work here as a firefighter. The next guy's like, oh, I live just up the road. Uh, next person, like, next person, we're putting, uh, there's a, a stream across the street from my house. We're filling it up with rocks to make, like, an ice bath. And all of a sudden, I'm just doing it. And these two kids just jump in the river with me, like, teenage kids. And they start putting rocks in. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't even start the conversation with them. They just started helping us move rocks yeah, that's without like even... The first 18 years of, of our lives were like. I know. And Cass over there being like in this like parallel universe of paranoia is like, he's like, man, he's like, all these guys are scoping you out, trying to rob your house. He's like, don't let them in. Don't get any information about who you are. Like I'm at the coffee shop. They're like, where are you from? I was like, oh, I just moved in from Malibu. Like I'm going to be out. Cass is like, man, he's like, you shouldn't give him that information. He's like, you don't understand. He's like, you're a target now. You're a target. I'm like, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> And <laughs> I love Cass, but it's people like him that make this world a terrible place. Oh, dude, the whole time I was like, Cass, shut the fuck up. We're moving <laughs> stuff around and we're there's like a storage area that's like a gym and it could be an apartment. And he's like, and I'm like up behind the other side of the house. And he's like, dude, he's like, were you just inside the gym? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, it sounded like you're pounding your head against the wall trying to communicate with me. I was like, what? Why would I pound my head against the wall? He's like, dude, it sounded just like that. He's like, are you sure you weren't in there? I was like, Cass, I've been up here behind you in like your peripherals the whole time, like stomping around like a big 200 pound man, like, you know, with big boots on. Like, you can't miss me. I was like, what the hell's going on with you? <laughs> the dude was hitting the bong. Like every, it was like an imam. Every minute on the minute, just ripping into it. He's like, <laughs> But, you know, as I was saying, dude, the whole town came together and was like so supportive and cool. Like everybody was about it. It felt That's awesome. Everyone's riding around on dirt bikes. Um, Did you do a name for the house yet? Uh, Fort Wilderness. Like the guy who used to live there, I guess, was a little bit of an exhibitionist when it came to the extracurricular like type things uh i think he told me he's just like we were like how did you make that thing he's like well i tried to spell fort fort uh fort something and he's like i was too drunk and i had to split the word up because it's like fort will wilder and then ness at the thing and it's on this big stump hanging from a wall well get yourself a chainsaw and uh when i, I come up and make a, a big old sign Dude, that's a crazy thing so i got a chainsaw i'm not like I was a logger for a year and I'm not saying that's like long enough to be like a dedicated mountain man, but I was in love with my chainsaw and my brother for Christmas was like, Hey, I'm going to get you an electric chainsaw. And I was like, dude, don't you fucking dare get me an electric chainsaw. I was like, that's the biggest pussy thing ever. He's like, no, dude, the reviews are great. So I was like, you know what? It's a gift. I can't like tell someone not to give me the gift that they want to give me. He sent me it. This electric chainsaw is the sickest tool I've ever owned. Yeah. I believe it, it rips because they got torque. They got really good torque. Dude, the thing like I'm straight up. You can give me a 24 inch wide tree and it's a 16 inch bar. It will nuke that tree really? so fast. I was like, what? Dude, it is, I, it's dead quiet. Chainsaw is hands down. You know, you want to get into frontier talk here. Hands down the most useful tool for building anything, period. I, I can build you an entire house with nothing but a chainsaw right now. That was the one thing I really realized I was like under on was, was basically my tools. I didn't have the tools to really get this house like tuned up. It was kind of embarrassing. 
So explain to me a little bit clear. So you, you bought this piece of uh, this property up in Big Bear somewhere, what, 20 minutes from the ski mountain? Uh, from Big Bear Ski Mountain, I would say it's probably around like 25 to 35 minutes. If you're okay. So it's a, it's really, a pretty, it's pretty out there, right? I mean, it's not that out there. Like the closest town that's like an actual town is about seven to eight minutes away. Okay. So I'm trying to paint the people a picture here. So you're about seven, eight minutes from the nearest town. You're up like on the side of a hill, right? So the best way to look at it is like, there's, it's crazy. I've never seen this road before and I don't know how I missed it. It's, it's off the edge of a road that's called rim of the world. It's a mountain road that literally rides across the entire landscape of the mountain range going all the way that pops out of Los Angeles, all the way to big bear. Mm -hmm. And instead of you turn left at running Springs, instead of turning right inland to big bear, because the mountains get bigger as you go back. You go across these mountains and it stays at about 5,000 to 6,000 feet all the way across. And you hump over the back of one mountain into a little down into an inlet of area called Lake Gregory. And I'm uptown of that in a town called Cedar Pines Park. And it's like, truth be told, I met this guy named Tom, who is my neighbor, like lives right next door to me. Him and his brother bought it 67 years ago when they were like young guys. Um it's right next to him. And it used to be just a shack. And now the person who owned it before me just built it out and just kept on building more and more shed, like shed cabins all over the place. From the picture I see, it's literally like, there's like one kind of main house and then there's like guest houses and wood shops and like, and tree everything, housing. everything. Cass and How I many, spent, what's that? Over or under 10 structures on the property. The fact that under you paused. 10. Under 10. I mean, like, listen, I, Listen, there's like, there's like the outdoor cabana. That's one. There's the man cabin. That's two. There's, there was a shed that I ripped to shreds. That's three. There's another little mini shed. That's four. There is the drug room. That's five, which is like an apartment gym now. And then there's the main house. That's six. And then there's seven, which is my tool shed, which is fucking gangster. Like I've never had my own tool shed, but it's like a real workshop. He built benches and everything in it left some of his old tools. That's awesome. I'm going to bring you some real tools. All right. So rapid fire here. Uh, three most important upgrades you've already made to the place. Oh, I wrecked this like crack den shed and now it opened the entire backyard because he clearly was doing this oh, quick rapid fire, uh, but wrecking that shed. Number one. Yeah. Number two, um, mm -hmm. I added a pull-up bar. I added a pull-up bar across these two beams. So sick. And number one, um, we fixed the fireplace outside. Cass did that. It, it was kind of like broken down from just like weather deterioration. He put new stone and cocked it all in and everything. And now it looks like it's like part of the mantle of like a fucking epic it's movie. A, Cass served a purpose there. All right. Now three most important upgrades that need to be made. <sighs> Everyone's like, paint the inside of the house. I'm going to shut the fuck up. It's a cabin. <laughs> um, Okay, the crow's nest is number one. Okay, so there's these two trees that are about arm's distance apart and they're about, I would say 30 to 40 inches wide each and they go about 100 feet, 120 feet up into the sky. About 60 feet up in the air, I'm gonna build a, uh, a tree fort called the crow's nest. Lookout tower. Ultimate, <laughs> ultimate land piracy. Uh, that's, that's number one. Number two is I have to just uh gut the door and make the uh drug room into like an apartment and then number three is probably like if if I, I need somebody like you to help me with this but i want to on the second lot that we have build like a two-story structure that's a gym downstairs and an apartment upstairs yeah and i think all in i could probably do all that for like twenty thousand dollars or less i know that's a significant amount of money but like if i did that this would be like an, a 10 out of 10 mountain training center. Yeah. I'm actually, that's, I'm, I'm working on coming up with a design for like a very simple, basically two car garage that has a gym downstairs and a studio apartment upstairs to do really cheaply. Cause I want to do one on my brother's property up in New Hampshire. I want to do one on the house that I'm looking to buy. And then we'll do one up at your place. Dude, listen, we could use this this vessel right here to pimp them out and sell them all over the internet. I think our customers are high ticket customers, listeners, they're high ticket listeners and they're trying to buy things like that.
their wives are like, what are you buying off the internet today? And they're like, well, I listen to Morningwood radio and this guy's got a degree in such and such. And uh, he basically told me to build this man cabin backyard right on top. I've of actually, I've patch. talked to a lot of women over the last few weeks who have told me that their husbands love listening to morning wind radio. And they're like, yeah, I just come downstairs in the morning. He's like on the treadmill, just like giggling and laughing and listening to your podcast. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Truth be told, I do get hit up by a lot of people saying that like, dude, you've changed my bike rides. You've changed my runs, everything like that. I think it's because you know what? Uh, I'm not saying that we're better than anybody else, which we are. Uh, but I just think that at least for me, these conversations are a breath of fresh air because I, I don't want to talk about the bullshit that's going on in modern day. Like I like talking about history, facts of life, things that are a little bit more substantial and, 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 and you could sit down at a coffee table or a bar stool and, and have the same kind of conversation and just, just can watch hours just tick away on the clock. So to be honest, and this is maybe there's a lot of other people like this, but this is how my brain works throughout the day. If I'm not like in conversation with someone or doing something really intense, I have these conversations throughout my head, like while I'm showering, while I'm on the bike, where I like literally I will tell myself stories and I'll give myself history lessons and like go like go over like the start of the Revolutionary War, like in my head, like as if I was teaching almost like a history class about it, but just to myself in my own head. Kate makes fun of me constantly because she's like, he's like, who are you talking to right now, Hunter? Cause I'll like have conversations and like, for some reason I use hand gestures all the time while talking to myself. She's like, who are you talking to right now? And I'm like, shh, woman, I've, leave me I've, be. I've actually got a lot worse about like catching myself talking out loud by myself to myself. What's wrong with that? I don't understand why that became a factor that you could judge somebody and be like, Hey, why it's weird that you're talking to yourself. I'm like, I spent a lot of time with myself and I think I'm a pretty great guy. So let me finish this conversation before you butt in. <laughs> Did you tell the um, world about your, um, your fancy doodly glasses? These are these right here. Yeah. These are my reading glasses. Those are blue light blockers, right? No, they're actually motorcycle glasses. Seriously. Yeah. That's they're, so they're, they're small so that like the, the wind resistance doesn't uh, knock them off your face. And they're, so they're, and they're, and they're yellow tinted so you can ride at night. Let's uh, talk about one other addition that I think I have to pull off is I contacted uh, Kyle, Coach, Coach Mud Honey, And I was like, one of the first things I noticed about living up at this house is half the town owns dirt bikes. They're mm-hmm. all riding around because there's, there's main roads and then there's fire roads that are clearly like for four by fours and dirt bikes. I was like, I have to pick like a, either like a, like a 400 to like a 500 CC street legal bike. And I, I'm, I'm going for it right now. I'm looking at Husky of uh, they have some street legal ones, KTM 400s. I like the DRs a lot. Suzuki's DR Suzuki's. Yeah. I'll put that down on the list. DR Suzuki. That would be, if you wanted my two cents, that's what I would uh, go with for sure. Well, the thing is, is like, I want it to be able to go from here to big bear. It's like, it would be like a 25 minute ride on a bike easily. Yeah. Um, also I want to be able to go back country and get on the same trail and go to big bear. Cause it's the yeah. same mileage and I could rip, but I want to be able to come on and off road street, legal, reliable, not super expensive. Like I'm not dropping five to 10 K on a bike. That's just going to get dumped. I would say you want to keep something that's as low. You don't want to get a super big bike that's um, going to sit you really high off the ground. And I say that because I, I know a lot of people who have got in accidents on the road with those bikes, because while they are streets too soupy. Yeah. yeah, They're they're like, they're while they're street legal, they're really designed to be taken on the trails. And like, like you, you slam the brakes on those things. You just go over the handlebars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, I had that, uh, that monster and like, that was the best bike. I could, you have to have a bike that sits well, like the, the monster sat up like this, the, the, you know, the rest of the bike sit down like this, Harley sit back like this. Yeah. I want, I want to find a bike that's kind of like a monster in the way that it sits and hugs. So honestly, you could get like uh, a BMW R1000 or R uh, I think they make an R600, 700. Uh, and a lot of people turn them into like scramblers, scramblers. So it's basically a, a like a cruiser road bike with a lot of pop that you can throw some knobbier tires on and people take them off road all the time. Huh. I was looking at BMWs yesterday. They're like 15 to $20,000. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, it's, it's just money. <laughs> just chuck that money away. That's another thing I recognize moving to this house is it's like I just like uh and this is expensive. Like there's the expense of Hemorrhaging buying money. the house. What's that? Hemorrhaging money left and right with a new property. Holy shit. I was like, buy a rake, buy a leaf blower, buy uh, this, buy that. Like everything is so fucking expensive. I was like, I spent a thousand dollars at Target the other day. I got sheets, I got blankets. What's that? Like toilet paper and stuff? No, dude. It's just like the basic stuff you need to have in a house. Like just just some of like the sub- staples of just like living in a house and like having it being functioning. Like I don't just have like wooden floors with like blankets on top of it. Like we got a bed and we set that up. We got blankets. We set that up. We got cups. We got, awesome. you know, all did, that kind of stuff. Did Katie help you with that stuff? Katie helped a ton. She brought some stuff in too. So like I that's, to, I have to say that like a, a woman's touch on making like a place homey is absolutely invaluable. Oh. Um, it's a, it's a skill that they have. That's like just a, a man just can't compared to it in, in no way shape or form yeah like i never would have got a rug they made me get a rug and then i put it down in front of the fireplace i was like whoa yeah. <laughs> i know exactly what the fuck like, is this? Stuff like that you're like that just changed my world first like that rug's stupid we don't need to spend money on that yeah dude i, I thought it was stupid too i'm just like thinking about climbing up in the trees behind my backyard and she's like you know you have a house that you could live in instead of up in those trees and like Damn. <laughs> so it does concern me a little bit that you <clears throat> you thought that you really needed my help for building this garage but didn't mention it um when you're talking about building a, a tree fort 60 feet off the ground well dude that's that like be- that's, that's, that's side by side you can't come up and do <laughs> one I, and not I do have the no other. doubt you can shimmy up that tree up to 60 feet no problem i would trust you all day long with that but putting like I don't, whatever kind of boards you're planning on nailing into that tree and then supporting your life and maybe the lives of other people i'm using, I'm using two inch you. tack nails and four by fours all right don't worry we'll get you we'll get you squared away when we get up there dude i can't wait for you to see the crow's nest like everything about this thing is like an ewok village and i I think to myself i was like when the zombies come i was like they'll be able to get into the house but they can't get up into the tree fort and i'll be up there with like 15 to 500 gallons of water and chunky campbell soup and i'll (laughs) i'll be an unstoppable force honestly i could if you gave me water and uh i would go for uh chef boradi uh the mini ravioli things Dude. give me like a couple hundred cans of those and and those things are those things are kind of like ageless like they just they don't yeah. they super, don't go bad super calorically dense all right i'm gonna bring in some facts here what's your first uh interesting fact about mountain men about mountain men well i kind of focus on uh on frontiersmen on sort of a one one class of frontiersmen and they're the the texas rangers oh shit dude you took it a totally different direction than i did i know well so so this is this is we decided we want to do this podcast on you know talking about hunter's new cabin up in the woods uh so my brother's uh work on building a house up in the mountains in new hampshire so we wanted to do it on frontiersmen so I started researching frontiersmen. I've, I've read a lot of books over the years on them. So I start looking at, you know, my favorite frontiersmen. And as I'm going through this list of, you know, <clears throat> fame, you know, infamous um, uh, people in history, like half of them happen to be Texas Rangers. And but, what, what like, era is the Texas Ranger, by the way? So they would be like 18, like about mid 1800s, um, right around the, so like Spanish American war era is actually how they st- were started by a uh, guy, Steve, uh, actually Steve Austin, believe it or not. Steve um, Austin. Yeah. yeah. So Stephen, F, Stephen F. Austin, uh, who was trying to defend the Texas coast against, uh, I think it were Tonkawa Indians. Um, Can I press the pause button for one second? Yeah. Hold on two seconds. I just got to do something. Uh, pause. Oh man, where'd you go, Kempson? I just uh, I'm here. I'm here. Hold on. I just gotta I just gotta get back in. Mm-hmm. We're back to recording. Uh all right. Hold on. I gotta f- figure out which page this was opened under. <sighs> that was rough. Uh why is it not? Oh, there we are. Voila. Ta-da. <clears throat> would you say that you feel uh lighter and more energized? I would say that I feel like the bonds of prison have been released because that was stressful. <laughs> Anybody who's listening, I want you to know, like the first time that we mentioned mountain, I had to poop. 
And that was like word two of this, this podcast. And I'm not trying to be inappropriate. Just guys got to do stuff sometimes. So let's skip past that conversation. Go on to mountain men talk. I feel you on that, buddy. What do you got? Um, please. Tell me about uh, these we're, Texas we're, Rangers. Oh yeah. We're basically kind of going through the history of that, but like all, you know, all my favorite guys, we got the, uh, Daniel Boone, Kit Carson, Sam Houston, like all these guys were associated with the Texas Rangers. Uh, Cause that <clears throat> you talk about frontier around, you know, mid 1800s, I think it's actually like 18, 1823, 1833, they officially got, got founded. But so at that point, all of America, if you looked at it, like a zoomed out map of America, everything east of Dallas, Dallas, Texas was trees, wooded, like completely wooded. New Texas York. Texas had trees? Yep. So everything east, basically east Texas, right? So if, if you draw Dallas is more or less separates Texas um, down the middle. Um, everything east of that is, is treed and wooded and everything west of that is open like prairie land, right? So that's where um, you call it like the frontier was everything. Once you got past the trees were sort of like a safe haven that the native Americans in the wooded areas were much more, uh, friendly uh, and welcoming to settlers and, and travelers. And then sort of West of that was when things got really, really hostile then. And obviously there was a lot, a lot of tensions with Mexico going on at that time. So your frontiersmen were basically people who decided to take it past that wooded boundary on the, Surprised uh, you didn't bring up Clint Eastwood. John Wayne. <laughs> These are extremely, extremely important characters. <laughs> Honestly, well, all right. So right now, are you a John Wayne guy or Clint Eastwood? I far Clint Eastwood. I mean, John Wayne's more classic for sure, but I just I, I love, love Clint cool. Eastwood. And I would say I'm an Eastwood guy, but at the same time, you have to appreciate that John Wayne was like one of this country's first like TV superheroes. And he was just basically an sort of overweight, like really curmudgeon -y, borderline alcoholic what you're looking at there pilgrim <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly who's this overweight man heckling me with a pistol on <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah it's, i mean throughout the entire history of, of frontiersmen these guys are just like the texas rangers come up all over the place and they were just a, you know an outfit of of employed by the texas government for a dollar 25 a day basically to protect the entire left side of the country um you it's know, a pretty good deal for back then isn't it that's a lot of money it so it buck 25 a day i'm saying this like i i know how much soda pop costs i bet you it's like 200 plus dollars but, a day now but but either way you're talking you'd be making 500 dollars a year which is i mean 500 dollars was a fortune back then that's what i'm saying think about that it's you'd be riding around on a pony with a pistol <laughs> dude there's this book i, I started about, reading we were talking about firearms right a couple podcasts ago uh, lo and behold we've got uh what's his name uh walker right walker texas ranger um if you will was the one who suggested to uh samuel colt that he make the six shot revolver so are the classic six shot revolver, your dirty hairy pistol, that's your favorite gun ever, uh, yeah. was an, an idea that spawned from a Texas Ranger. I like the sounds of that. Yeah. I, uh, I went in a little bit of a different direction. I mean, I, I basically was looking up specifics on the mountain men. You're down like in, in that. Basically, the facts that I got right here, it says that the majority of trappers, like the time that it was going on, mountain went, men otherwise known as frontiersmen as you were saying it was happening in the in the era of 1800 to 1890 and there was around 3000 men mostly in the rocky mountain national parks trapping beavers as you know i love trapping beavers i've never actually caught one but i'm always on the lookout <laughs> so i i read a i read a book on the history of detroit uh, a few years back and talk about trapping beavers and and uh and frontiersmen if you if you if you read about the history of Detroit, the place burnt down like five times in a period of like its first 50 years in existence. And it was just a settlement of beaver trappers. Just, just really drunk as all hell. Hard, 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 drunk off their ass men who spent all day trapping beavers and were constantly, constantly attacked by the French and by Native Americans and just got their city burnt down again and again and again. And that's how Detroit started. And it's still burning down to this day. 
Truth be told, dude, I've I've never actually met a beaver trapping man until I started dating this one girl and I went out and visited her family in Colorado. And her, her, her grandfather was from Kentucky old school. And he spent the majority of his day, he was well to do. So he didn't really have to do much anymore. I spent the majority of his day trapping beavers. And if I had to find penny for, for a beaver, belt. <laughs> dude, he was telling me he'd find like, he's like damn near a hundred pound beavers down them rivers. Like, and I thought to myself, I was like, if you can take that man and multiply him by the hundreds, if not the thousands, like, can you imagine the insanity that we'd be living in? <laughs> that was our community. He was a great man. Don't get me wrong. But the energy he had around catching beavers was fantastic. Astounding. And he was like, his, I'm not, I put a fair amount of effort into <laughs> energy into to trapping beavers too. Yeah, I know. So. It's a sport. It's a sport for days. And uh, I mean, interestingly enough, I've never been to Rocky Mountain National Park. You've been there, I'm sure. Um, yeah. oh, Rocky Mountain right. Kempson. And it seems like the majority of history that I can find about mountain men comes from that area. Um, right. Yeah, but I, I did want to ask you one thing. What country in the world has the most untamed wilderness? I mean, Russia is the first thing that comes to mind. There you go. Well done. 15 million square kilometers of untamed Still not wilderness. Explored. What's that? Still not, not claimed. Well, it's not that they're saying it's not explored, but it's not claimed by any means. Like it's just. Like un- me and they- you could go there right now and we could go get ourselves a piece. You and I really could go there right now and probably claim something the size of the United States. And it, we wouldn't bump into anybody else in our adventure saying like, oh, this is our land now. We look around, we're like, is anybody going to try to take this? Spend the rest of our lives on, uh, you know, just nothing's going to get in the way of us. That's kind of horrifying. Yeah, yeah. It, I know that we're destroying the planet, but then when you hear things like that, you're like, How? Like we're, they're like, we're destroying all the trees. We're going to remove all the trees. Now there's this new sea spiracy documentary out that's all over the internet talking about how we're destroying the oceans. And you think about how much space we truly cover. Like, have you ever looked at like heat maps of how many, like, you know, where we actually sit, we're mostly coastal based and there's not that much space that we take up. Yeah. And then you hear something like this. I I read an interesting, um, sort of quote a while back that was, or I think it was like on some kind of environmental uh, doc, document uh, documentary that was like, we're pretty vain in thinking that mankind is like destroying this planet and we're going to, oh, we're going to ruin, we're going to ruin the world, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm a very environmentally conscious person, but the truth of the matter is that the only thing we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves extinct, yeah. right? We're just going to kill off ourselves and the world earth will go on living and thriving long, long after we're gone. We're, you know, if we, if we nuke the entire, you know, every country and every planet and blow up every single person and the sky is going to fill up with smoke and the atmosphere is going to change within probably 20 years, it's going to go back to looking exactly like it was before we were even here. Everything's going to be grown over with plants. The trees are going to grow back and it's going to go on living. And we're all we're going to do is kill ourselves off. I'm going to have to fact check you. I don't know if that's necessarily 100% true. Also in the comments of one of our most recent interviews, you were like, all the presidents were over six feet tall. And someone wrote, it's like, actually, facts say that majority of presidents were never over six feet tall. It's like, what? I was like, you got to take He's that wrong. up. Who is this person? Tell me their name right now. And I'm going to get a plane ticket, fly to the house. You got to take that up again. And, I, I and I'm going to have him hand write down every president's not over six feet He's wrong. I'm just telling you when you're like, yeah, and all the nukes could hit everywhere. We could blow up the whole planet and be totally fine. I was like, I don't know. I'm that's... telling you, think about it. Think about it. We're this, this, this rock is so big and so resilient. Like there has been tons, millions of species that have been come and gone before us. And there's going to be many, many after us. And all we're going to do is kill ourselves. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I'm not the person with the facts here, but I just, I would say that I would err on the side of caution saying, if you guys are listening to this and you think you can just start throwing cigarette butts in rivers, I'm coming to fucking get you. So actually on that note, remember we did the no plastic April challenge that last was year. Hard. It was very, so, so for context, 
last year at somewhat beginning of quarantine where we didn't have a whole lot to do, we decided to go, we're going to go an entire month without creating any pl- uh, That was two years ago, by the way. Was it? Oh, so it wasn't during quarantine. Mm-hmm. All right. So two years ago, it was me, you and Cole, the three of us were going to go an entire uh, month without using any consumable plastics. So that meant like no uh, grocery bags, no, if you went to the grocery store, you couldn't get anything like you couldn't buy cereal that had, you know, plastic was wrapped in plastic. You couldn't buy meat from the deli that was wrapped in plastic. You couldn't like, you couldn't get a, a, a be soda single from, use. from the store. Yeah. Nothing single use like that. So we, we've had our own containers and we went and, and we, we pulled it off. It really wasn't that difficult once you got in the rhythm of it, but I'm going to bring it back. And I'm going to, if you'd like to join, I would love to have you. Um, if not, I'd love your support either way, but we're going to do, you can do it uh, all April. All April. I don't know. At the very, at the very least, do do your best to. Uh, I can start like part. April fifteenth. I just got that High Rocks competition coming up, which I'll drop some new knowledge well, on. Here's what I'm thinking: is that you, for the people who are, you know, not entirely competent, they can do, they can really do it. Take a, you know, look under your sink or where you have your storm. You know, like a. a a plastic grocery bag, right? And that's every, all plastic waste that you create in the next month has to fit in that. Dude, I do that in like a day. You, you have to understand, like I'm eating like six to nine yogurt packets a day, brekkie packages. I go through a bo- I, box of know, cereal I, day. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rag on you. I'm not going to get on your case, but just buy a bigger container of yogurt. It doesn't work that way. All right. Well, this is going to get awkward. Let's move on to the next subject. Yeah. No, no. Listen, I'm willing to do this thing after, after high rocks. I just need to stay on my diet and stay right, dialed. We'll, we'll waterfall it. I'll go. Then you go. All right, deal. I like the sounds of that. A quick update with high rocks. I thought that they had basically Biden put that ban on the European union coming in. Uh, supposedly I just found out from high rocks people that the number two, number two people from the high rocks world championships, Lucas and viola are actually going to make it here like my my heart kind of dropped into my toilet this morning when i found that out i was like fuck lucas lucas runs hard yeah lucas runs hard that viola girl is a fucking monster too it's like it's going to be a gnarly experience is uh so so, uh samander salander mk is she coming mk salamander um i don't think so I don't think so. I think they're just kind of shooting their shot with these two. Oh, hey, for the women's field for High Rocks, what, what's your prediction for top five uh, females? I think it's going to go like Lauren Weeks, um, Rebecca Hammond, Katie. You think uh, that Rebecca will beat uh, uh, Faye? Yeah, I don't even know if Faye's showing up. A you lot think, of people in the past, like, five? what's that? Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I would definitely put Katie top three. Yeah, she's such a fucking beast. She's, these days. she's way. I mean, other than Lauren, she's probably stronger than all those girls, and has isn't. I mean, she her like speed's not great, but her endurance is absolutely fantastic. She'll just hold a seven minute mile the whole time. Yeah, and there's faster girls, but she'll hold a seven minute mile the whole time. She'll never stop on any of the movements. It's just like, well, remember when we did like the first Murph workout with her and we're like, wait a second, are you done already? Yeah. And I was like, are you sure you didn't miss anything? And I was like, I was watching you do your pushups. They sucked. She's like, no, I did them all. And she would do yeah. it over and over and over again. I, I, that, that was actually great. Right. I like was pretty astounded when I saw that because we bring people in all the time to come work out with us and we don't actually, we'll give them the workout, but we don't really actually expect them to eat one even really do the whole thing or two if they do it to like you know it's going to take them hours and she freaking crushed it devastated it dude so i'm interested to see i'm interested to see how she does i think sam briggs is coming and i feel like she doesn't mess things up twice like she didn't do that well the first time Mm -hmm. so if she shows up she's going to be dominant um there's Alyssa holly who's probably been in quiet for a long time who's gonna be great i've been watching for the last like year she's it looks like she's been focusing almost in it only on this 
just getting stronger. I think she's going to be tough. And then you got Corinna. And Corinna has just got to decide. I think most events Corinna goes to, she's going to win if she decides she wants to win. Yeah. I don't think she's had that decision in her brand, her mind for a while now. Like, I think she's, she just got engaged. She's got her, she had college, she had all this other stuff. So seems like she's got focus elsewhere, but she's always a very dominant force to compete against. Yeah. By the I mean, way, you could, like, also, you could say that about a lot of people that like, oh, if this person really, really wanted to win this event and was willing to sacrifice everything else and train nothing for this, they would probably win. Yeah. You know, that's everything. I, I had to have a conversation with myself not too long ago for my birthday. I went out and I partied pretty hard. And by the end of the night, I was just sitting by myself. I was like, dude, you're you're doing a thousand different things because you have the opportunity to do a thousand different things. I was like, you need to go back to being that dude who wants to just kill mm -hmm. one thing. And then from there mm -hmm. go. And I was like, that's it. That's like, that's the sacrifice that it takes to be the best at something. It mm -hmm. takes like a John Albin like effort, just living in Norway, going up and down mountains, 350 days out of the year. And you show up and just dominate when it's your time. You know, I was actually thinking about that. Uh, last night where i'm like you know sometimes i look back and i'm like i spent a better part of five years uh doing working on my endurance and training for almost an, exclusively for like spartan race and whatever you know battle frog whatever else was out at the time um and at the time you know it, it was you're you're chasing kind of a almost Im impossible goal at some point but, but now when I look back on it, like what I'm trying to do with tactical games right now, because I was so solely focused on working on my, on my endurance like that for so long, I, I now can draw back on that. And I have a, you know, far and beyond better endurance than I'll ever need to, to compete at this tactical games. But that only came from being so focused on Spartan race and training for that for so long. So it, sometimes it, it doesn't seem all that clear at the time, but there's a, there's a reason for all of it. Yeah. No, everything's pieces of the puzzle. Everything's pieces of the puzzle. I have to say um, a lot of the fitness I stacked up from doing just CrossFit stuff, which I don't really enjoy as much anymore has changed my life. Like I would not be as powerful and steady during this high rock stuff during the fitness stations and all the running that I did for years when I was skinny mini, it all yeah. came together and it converges and it seems like oh. the same things happen to your huge tackle games. Yeah. When you, when you were training for, you know, I watched you when you were training for, uh, the CrossFit game, you had, you gave up running, you gave up a lot of those things and you had to focus solely, solely on that and look like it half killed you and looked terrible, but serves a purpose. Damn right, dude. Well, let's finish off with a couple more facts about this stuff before we button, button this bad boy up. First of all, I, I read this interesting fact about a guy named Eustace Conway. He said, most mountain men are eating around 5,000 calories a day, equivalent to Tour de France athlete. Uh, were the intake. And he said he just did it to keep the weight on. And he goes, um, what do I do for a living? I live for a living. And I was like, damn, mm. that right there is a statement. So wow. it seemed like a lot of things that I was reading about mountain men is they basically just became, they made profit off of living harder than anybody else did. Like, you know, you could live on a farm and you could, you know, milk cows and things like that. Like they were just making it professional to be woodsmen, catching things, eating things, surviving hard winters, and then selling it or selling their bounty to people or the guiding them through the space. I think it was like, it's kind of like a, this untouched uh, gem of this wealth of uh, resources that was just too dangerous for most the, your average person to enter. Uh, right. It was kind of like the forbidden pool and it took a, a very hardy, you know, person with a lot of cojones to go out there and survive in an unknown, un, literally unmapped, uncharted territory and kind of, and reap, reap this bounty and, and bring it back. And if you had, if you had the balls to do that, you were going to get paid for it. Well, that's what I'm planning on doing right now. I'm trying to go into undiscovered territory. There's so much of that mountain range out there that I feel like nobody goes back in. It's right. huge. The mountain range is fucking massive behind Los Angeles. And I'm basically, I already got myself a bobcat trap and cat collector, which is cat pee and cum, I think, from cats. 
and uh, it's nasty, I know. And uh, I'm basically, <laughs> I'm going to start a whole new lifestyle. There's going to be Malibu Hunter and then there's going to be Mountain Man Hunter. And it's just going to keep on going back and forth and back and forth. And one of the battles is going to win. I think it's going to be Mountain Man. I hope so. I really hope so. So I think I think I might go in a slightly different direction with that. You know, when you talk about un, uncharted territory, I think I think the Everglades down in Florida is what really is calling me. I have that brought up right here, dude. Uh, shoot. Where did I go with that? Basically, like the most untamed p- places in the United States, and it's Everglades right. was number one. It's huge. It's it's a place like the size. It's like the size of the state of New Hampshire inside of Florida, is like more or less un- not I don't want to say unexplored, but like totally wild gator country. And you I think if I get my- exploring it right now, if if I get myself an airboat, uh, and a good gator rifle. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You know, you got to talk to you about this is, is Mac. Mac's back. Mac is back from he's back stateside? Telemundoville. And <laughs> he's, living in, he's living in Florida. And he told me his sister is basically lives in the Everglades. And all they do is just go around and like shoot coons and other wild animals and oh trap them. God. All right. <clears throat> we need to get Mac on the podcast. I would do anything to have Mac on the podcast. I think he's he's fading out of the United States and becoming more of a Spanish person, but he's still not speaking Spanish. I'm assuming he's having a tra- hard time. He's basically like a large Teletubby that's trying to learn Spanish and also is ripped with muscle. God, I'm watching Mac, videos of him now and the way he acts. I'm like, dude, you look like just like a Teletubby. He has so much potential. No, actually I've watched, he is learning Spanish. He's um, I mean, I don't think it comes naturally to him, but he's, he's putting the work in. Dude, he got hurt down there at the show. Really? What happened? Uh, I think he like lightly tore like a shoulder or peck. Mm. Sucks, dude. But someone sucks. with that much muscle muscle on him, that small tear can really be detrimental. Dude, he's the king of all obstacles. So, I mean, you got the opportunity to go down there and go into the Everglades. And based on some other stats that I got here, um, I would say the most interesting thing that I found out is it across the board mountain men needed these objects and i want to know on the list how many of these things do you own Ooh, extra, no. extra rifle do you have a rifle yes okay you got that powder for your rifle i'm just saying do you have bullets i got i got a, i got a box of bullets in the closet lead to make your own bullets yes you do i, I got some stuff i can melt down Come on, don't lie to me. You really have stuff that you can make your own bullets with if you needed to right now. Mm-hmm. I used to do it when I was a kid. All right, so you got bullet molds. Do you have a beaver trap? You might have to be a little more specific on that. <laughs> we all got a beaver <laughs> trap. I, so on the beginning half of this list, I don't have any of this stuff, but beaver trap, I do have. Axe, do you have an axe at your house uh, right now? Yes. You have an axe? Yes. Okay, I got one. Do you have a hatchet? Well, it's it's a hatchet, but it's 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 a large hatchet and it's very sharp at work as an axe. Hold on, hold on. You need to either have it, it, it's on the list. Do you have a hatchet? All right, no axe, no axe, but I got a hatchet. All right, all right. Do you have cookware? Yeah. Cast iron plate. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you have blankets? Mm-hmm. Do you have coffee? Mm-hmm. I ran out of coffee this morning. I was like, I was like rummaging through things. I felt like a drug addict. I was like, God damn it. I was like, kind of the way you're reacting about not having coffee right now is kind of ridiculous. Do you have several pounds of flour? Mm, I don't. I don't know if I have it either. I mean, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have like one small bag of coconut flour and then a bunch of rice. All right. I mean, we can both say that we got enough stuff. I got across some the too. Baked Across beans. the board, if you want to be a mountain man, it just seems like you need to have tons of things for killing. You need to have traps. You need to have sharp objects. And you need to have things that will keep you warm. And I think I'm like looking pretty good, dude. If you come up to my house, like I've got this. I have one of those gigantic dry robes that I was wearing all around town. That's so hysterical. Like, dude, it's it's fun. It's a totally different character up there. Another quick fire. Who's your favorite person in the town of Big Bear so far that you met? Oh, up there, Chuck. I met this guy named Chuck, and he was like, hey, man, dude. I was running. He was like, dude, how far are you running? I was like, oh, 10 miles today. He's like, oh, dude, I saw you the other day running up from Hesperia. And I was like, to myself, I'm like, I've never been to Hesperia. I've never done this. He's like, dude, it was so crazy you were doing that. 
he's missing half of his teeth. I kept on running and then somehow I bumped into him like a half mile, mile up the road and it was his house. And he was just like, he's like, man, why go down there? You can get the temple. The temple's down there. I got the keys to the temple. I'll take you to the temple. I was like, damn, this person, I cannot tell if he like truly has the keys to the temple or he's fucking you ripping send us. Cass to go hang out with him for a while. hundred percent. So he's by far my favorite guy right now. And then I got Xavier and I got Bob Marley. Those are my favorite guys. Sounds like a good community up there. Dude, you need to come out. I'm telling you right now. I'll be, I'll be there soon. I'll be there soon. Yeah. And other than this, I mean, as far as I got facts with mountain manning, you know, there wasn't really much. Like it kind of just seemed like every single website that I went to regurgitated the same information, but I will give you guys this. This is a book that I read a while back and I, I fell asleep during most of the reading of it, to be honest, because I was a terrible reader at the time. But there's a book called The Splendid Savage about, um, gosh, what is the notes on this guy? Uh, I got it right here. I just bought it to listen on audio. This is a book that everyone should listen to. And it's a splendid savage on Frederick Russell Burnham. And this right here is, it blew my mind that humans like this existed. He was like a modern day Renaissance man where he would like run 50 miles. He would buy real estate he would fight indians he would trap stuff like he was just insane by like the age of 10 he was just like the most worldly man that there was on the frontier that right there is probably if anybody's listening that's interested in this lifestyle this is where you should start this man seemed to be the mountain man but also be the malibu man at the same time malibu man all right i'll leave i'll leave on my uh my one my one quote uh of uh, an, an author who was writing about the Texas Rangers, uh, describing them in four lines. He said, a Texas Ranger could ride like a Mexican, trail like an Indian, shoot like a Tennessean, and fight like the devil. Damn. I need to have that tattooed across my dingus. Heck yeah. All right. I think by that's way, a good one to go out on. By the way, you didn't bring up Teddy Roosevelt this podcast. I did some research on him, dude. He was one oh, of the... Oh, well, he, I, I mean... <laughs> Dude. All right, all right, all right. He Fired was the person who founded naturalism and also he conserved 230 million acres in the United States. And, and also like an ultimate gunsman cowboy adventurer. You didn't even bring and, it up once. He not only explored American frontiers, he explored frontiers in Africa, down in South America. Um, MVP, Frontiersman Award, <clears throat> split between Texas Rangers. And the one and only Teddy Roosevelt. We need to, we need to come up with a bell, one of those like those like sound chime things that's like bam 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 Teddy time. Every time when I talk about <laughs> Teddy time, every time we talk about Teddy on the podcast, I'm so glad you brought that up because it would have really upset me if we made it through this whole podcast and we and we on episode six we forgot to talk about Teddy. <laughs> dude. I left it there in the notes. It's like is he gonna bring it up? Is he gonna bring it up? Because I know you wanted to say it. And you wow, left. good call, good call. Listen, man, I'm a guy, I'm a man of the people. All right, brother. Uh, this is the wrap up of a amazing podcast with you once again. Um, like Morningwood Radio. Oh, shoot. I forgot to pick the person who won the $250. I will release that next episode. I, I had it written down, but I can't find it. But I am giving it away. This well, is another that you're going to release it in the show notes of, of this one. In the All right, I'll release it in the show notes. That means that people will have to engage in a different factor. But basically, guys, uh, it's really helpful what you guys did. That's the most engagement we've had on anything. And obviously, I put a cash prize on ahead of it. So I hope that you guys continue to engage without me having to incentivize you with money. Um, Kempson, what do you got coming up? We have High Rocks right around the corner. He rocks. Yeah, I'm pumped about that. April 10th. Um, if anybody's in the California area and wants to come up to the man cabin, come check it out. Otherwise, you're going to be seeing us in Texas April 10th. Dallas and uh we'll be living like frontiersmen after the event. I haven't drank at all, by the way, in almost a month. So I am looking forward to getting a rip shit party wasted. I'm only gonna drink pirate punch. Yeah. Yeah. All right, people, over and out.